Russia began recruiting women from prisons to the front in Ukraine. The scale is revealed. At the end of May, Russia released a group of women from prison to participate in the fighting in Ukraine. This may indicate a new stage in the Kremlin's use of criminals in war. This is reported by the New York Times, citing ex-prisoners who maintain contact with those who are still in prison. According to them, military recruiters took several women from a prison near St. Petersburg. It is unclear whether their release is an isolated incident, a pilot program, or the start of a larger wave of recruitment. As of the beginning of 2022, about 30,000 women were serving sentences in Russian prisons. Recruiters began canvassing prisons for women throughout European Russia in the fall of 2023. However, until now, convicted women who entered military service remained prisoners without official explanation. The recruitment of women convicts comes at a time when the Russian government is resorting to increasingly unconventional schemes to attract volunteers from the margins of Russian society trying to avoid another unpopular conscription. In addition to prisoners, these recruitment schemes are aimed at debtors, accused of crimes and foreigners. Journalists say it is not yet known what duties the conscripts will perform at the front. Recruiters offered prisoners contracts to serve as snipers, combat nurses and frontline radio operators for one year. Then only about 40 out of 400 prisoners in the colony agreed. They were offered a pardon and a payment equivalent to about $2,000 a month, which is about 10 times the minimum wage in Russia. As former prisoners explained, the women made the decision to go to the front, among other things, because of the harsh conditions in Russian prisons. They were forced to remain silent at all times and spent up to 12 hours a day doing mandatory work in the prison's sawmill, even in sub-zero winter temperatures. According to the Financial Times, by the end of 2024 or the beginning of 2025, a new wave of partial mobilization may be announced in Russia. Despite heavy losses, the occupying army is now 15% larger than when the full-scale war began. Financial incentives that raised military salaries to unprecedented levels played the biggest role in persuading Russians to go to war. Ukrainian troops struck one Russian S-400 anti-aircraft missile system near Zankoy town, as well as two S-300 anti-aircraft missile systems near Kornomorsk and Yevpatoria cities in Russian annexed Crimea Peninsula on the night leading to June 10, the General Staff of Ukrainian Armed Forces reported. Due to the successful combat work of the defense forces, the air defense of the Russian invaders in the Ukrainian Crimea suffered significant losses, the General Staff stated, adding that none of our missiles were intercepted by Russia's air defense. Ukraine used at least 10 Adikms missiles, none of which were struck, during the attack, ASTRA Telegram Channel reported. Four radars were damaged as a result of the overnight Ukrainian missile attack on Crimea. A soldier of the 31st Air Defense Division was killed and six were wounded in the attack, the source said. Four missiles hit the 31st Air Defense Division site in Zankoy District where two radar stations were damaged, and one serviceman was wounded, ASTRA said with reference to emergency services in Crimea. Another four missiles hit the location of this division in the Saksky district, where military equipment was damaged and a serviceman was wounded. The amount and degree of damage is being determined, ASTRA said. Two more missiles hit the location of the 31st Air Defense Division in the Black Sea region, a few kilometers from the village of Gromovo. Two more radars, two S-300 systems were damaged, one serviceman was killed and four were injured in that location, the source said. Dozens civilians have been killed in a spate of attacks over the past week across the Democratic Republic of Congo's troubled North Kivu province. The armed men used guns and machetes to attack residents of on Friday, local official Fabian Kakil said. District official Leon Kakul Sivu said that the recent surge in violence was due to the attackers taking advantage of a small security presence. Local civil society leader Justin Kavalami blamed members of the Allied Democratic Forces for the attack. According to Reuters, 
the death toll has risen to 41 following an attack on last Friday by suspected Islamist rebels on villages in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, a Congolese army spokesman said, bringing the total toll in the region to more than 80 since Tuesday. The Allied Democratic Forces, which is also accused of being behind another village assault that killed at least 16 people earlier this week, was originally based in neighboring Uganda. After spreading to the eastern DRC, it pledged allegiance to ISIL in 2018 and has mounted frequent attacks, further destabilizing a region where many armed groups are active. Its alliance with Islamic State is thought to have begun about six years ago, but analysts say those links are tenuous. An online post by Islamic State says one of this week's attacks in North Kivu targeted Christians. Joint military operations by Ugandan and Congolese forces against allied democratic forces rebels began in 2021 but they have failed to stop attacks on civilians.